Jim. To come in and rescue the play for three. Usman Jang, a French forward by way of the New Zealand Breakers in the NBL, is one of the most intriguing prospects in this year's draft class. A high ceiling, high potential forward with intriguing perimeter skills, had a stellar second half to his season and rose up draft boards. Now, there's a chance that he could go in the top 10. Here are the positives for Usman Jang, the first of which is his playmaking. Jang has potential in a point forward type of role as he's able to to handle the ball on the perimeter, and he's already capable of making some high-level reads. He plays at a good pace, which also helps him read the floor. The second positive for Jang is his scoring upside. Jang is able to make things happen off the bounce for himself, possesses some comfortability with a mid-range floater, his shot improved over the season in the NBL, and he's able to knock down some jump shots off the dribble, and he also has the upside to be a guy that can get to the rim and finish consistently. The third upside for Jang is his overall defense. Jang is a impressive as an on-ball defender, possessing solid lateral quickness, and doesn't bite hard on dribble moves. His length allows him to play offensive players with a little bit more of a gap, which helps him stay in front of them, and he has the potential to guard four positions. Jang is also a very solid off-ball defender and team defender. He makes the right rotations, he reads the game quickly, and Jang should be a positive defender at the next level. The fourth positive for Jang is his length and his fluidity. This is more of a general strength of his as these traits help him in a number of areas, but his length and his fluidity have me a little bit more confident in his long-term offensive upside. Speaking of upside, Jang has one of the highest ceilings in this year's draft. If he ends up in the right situation, a team might strike gold, and pundits will ask why Jang was so underrated on draft night. However, there are some legitimate criticisms of his game and areas in which he needs to improve, the first of which is his strength. A lot of Jang's value comes in his creation ability, but Currently, he gets bumped off his drives too much, he struggles getting to the rim, he struggles finishing through contact in the paint, and adding some strength will help him fulfill his immense potential as a defensive player. The second area of improvement for him is his pull-up shooting. Currently, defenders are able to go under pick-and-roll screens on him, and he doesn't consistently make them pay. He's also not comfortable yet pulling up from the mid-range either, and while his stroke off the bounce is pretty fluid, giving some reason for optimism, it is definitely an area of question. The third area to improve for Jang is finishing at the rim. Oftentimes he settles for weird mid-range floaters when it seems like he could get all the way to the cup. He also could use his length and craftier ways to finish around the rim, and too often he shies away from contact. The fourth negative is his overall explosiveness. While he is a fluid athlete and agile, he's not the most explosive player, he doesn't have the quickest first step, and he's not one to explode to finish around the rim. If this is something that he can somehow improve upon, then the sky's the limit for him as a prospect. The fifth question mark for Usman Jang is his off-ball fit. While he's a very intriguing player with the ball in his hands, if he's not able to fully fulfill that potential to be a guy who you have the ball in his hands consistently, then there are some questions as to how Jang fits as a more secondary piece. Most of this revolves around his shooting, which is very inconsistent, and Jang will either need to become such a good player that it justifies putting the ball in his hands consistently, or a better and more consistent spot-up shooter. When evaluating Jang's game translating to the NBA, it's a tough, uh, it's a tough evaluation. On one hand, his length is definitely going to be a positive, his playmaking skills I am fully in on, and defensively I think he will be a good player in the NBA. The question marks for him just come from what he's going to be offensively. Is he going to be a guy that's more of a secondary playmaker that plays more off the ball and can hopefully knock down shots, or does he grow into that guy that you can give the ball to, he can play a point forward type role, he can initiate a lot of offense, and he can be a dynamic scorer off the dribble. The difference in answers on that question will reflect the difference in how highly people have Jang rated on their big boards. Jang's lack of explosiveness could be a problem at the NBA level in terms of trying to turn the corner and create. I think he's going to have to become a much stronger player in order to use his body more on drives given his lack of explosiveness. Either that or he's going to have to become a much 
much better off the dribble shooter to keep defenders honest. If he can do both those things, then I think Jang ends up becoming an all-star caliber talent, and I think he might be able to shoot good enough. I don't think he's going to be a terrible shooter in the league. It's just hard to project how good of a shooter he can become off the bounce, and it's hard to project how much strength he can add. But adding strength and shooting the ball better are two of the main things that players develop when they get into the NBA, and envisioning Usman Jang as a guy who does that is... I mean, a pretty dang good player as a guy that can defend, has size, fluidity, and can pass the ball the way he does. If he's stronger, he'll be better with contact around the rim. I think he won't shy away from contact as much around the rim. I'm still intrigued by his floater game as well. And if you just add a pull-up jump shot to that arsenal, you have a three-level score that can score in pretty much any way possible. That is the most optimistic version of Jang. I buy him becoming a better pull-up shooter and a stronger player. I have him ranked pretty highly on my big board for that reason. I think his upside is too tantalizing not to bet on those skills improving. It's funny because three-point shooting has become so important in the league. Developing the outside shot will make him a better player off the ball, catching and shooting, and then it'll also help him turn the corner a little bit more consistently on drives. It might force defenders to go over pick and rolls, so the three-point shot is crucial for him both as a guy with the ball in his hands and a guy off the ball. If he doesn't end up being a good NBA three-point shooter, then his floor is actually pretty low because uh, he'll probably be a solid defensive player, but his playmaking skills he won't be able to make real use of in a consistent manner. Pick and rolls won't be super effective if defenders can just go under screens. And then how he fits without the ball is, is kind of clunky if he's not a good three-point shooter. So the three-point ball is maybe the biggest swing skill, in my opinion, for Usman Jang compared to possibly any other player in the draft. But there are some good things with his form. He does kind of shoot the ball from the other side of his body, but I think his form looks better than it did a year or two ago. And if you think he'll continue to improve, you'll have him higher on your board than those who don't. That's that's the key with an Usman Jang. So overall, Jang is just a super boomer bust type prospect. And I'm curious to see if you guys think he will fulfill some of that potential or not. Let me know down in the comment section below. Defensively, I do really like him as a switchable guy. Adding more strength will make him a a more viable option to throw up against forwards. Right now, he might be better against guards simply because of his lack of strength. He's quick enough to hang with guards, but the idealistic version of him is playing him at a forward spot and then him being a guy that can switch down onto guards in that if you have some other switchable versatile defenders in the lineup, he can switch amongst other guys. And in the best case scenario, he can be a guy that you throw up against a star perimeter player and he can give them some trouble. Given his defensive upside, that I'm confident in, I am a little bit more comfortable taking a bet on an Usman Jang offensively because I think regardless of how his offensive game pans out, he will be an asset on the defensive end. And then a 6'9 guy that can handle a little bit and can pass is just always an intriguing skill set to have, even if some of the other things don't pan out. So that's why I'm intrigued in Usman Jang. I think the draft range for him is from about 9 to 15 or 16. I love Usman Jang for the San Antonio Spurs at nine. I think they need more upside and they need more forward depth. He would address both those things and give them hopefully their next great French player. It would be really intriguing to watch Usman Jang develop under Greg Popovich. 10 to Washington could make some sense. They're pretty stacked with forwards. Rui Hachimura, Denny Avdia, Kyle Kuzma, Contavious Caldwell-Pope can play some three. But still, in Washington's position, they might end up trading that pick. Whoever trades for that pick could be a team that selects them. I think the Wizards might go after Malcolm Brogdon of the Indiana Pacers, who already have the sixth pick. I think Usman Jang would make a ton of sense for the Pacers at 10. I think six is a little bit high, but at 10 going for some upside, going for some forward depth, which they don't really have right now, would make a lot of sense for Indiana if they trade into that 10th spot. For Washington, it's a weirder fit. At 11 to New York, I wouldn't mind that either. They do have Julius Randle and Obi Toppin at the power forward spots. RJ Barrett can play some three, but I think you could slide RJ Barrett down to the two. Randle's a guy that needs the ball in his hands consistently. RJ Barrett is a good player with the ball in his hands as well. Solid three-point shooter, so he can play off of it, but I think the fit there is a little bit weird. If they 
trade Julius Randle and have Obi Toppin as their starting four, I like Jang's long-term fit there a little bit better. Obi Toppin is a better off-ball player. He cuts well. He's more of a lob target. And Usman Jang, Obi Toppin pick and rolls would be interesting. At 12 to OKC, he'd make a ton of sense too. As I've said numerous times, OKC needs to swing for some upside with all the picks they have and just try and hit a couple home runs. Usman Jang could be that home run pick for them. Charlotte at 13 or 15 could make some sense as well. They need a little bit more forward depth. They already have a big playmaker in LaMelo Ball playing the point guard position. He has the size to guard three positions. He's not great at guarding any one position, but he has a size to guard three, so if you have another versatile defender in there that can also handle the ball and play make a little bit, that could be an intriguing long-term fit there in Charlotte. I wouldn't mind Cleveland either. Right now, they're starting Larry Markkinen at the three. I'm not a huge fan of that long-term. I think that Cleveland is an intriguing spot, though, because maybe you can play Usman Jang at some shooting guard. They need a starting shooting guard of the future. I don't think Colin Sexton is the right fit there, and Cleveland has had some success going with a big lineup. Anyway, let me know where you think would be the best situation for Usman Jang. Let me know what you think of his game in general. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on him as a prospect because he's a very intriguing player. I'll have one or two more draft profiles and then we'll be done with the draft profile series. I'll have a mailbag. Check the community tab to ask a question. I'll drop that later tonight. We will be streaming later tonight over on our second channel, Blazer Surprise Live. Link at the top of the description box below. So go subscribe to that so you don't miss that stream. And we will be live streaming the draft on Thursday, June 23rd. Anyway, with that being said, I'm out of here. Until next time, as always, peace out. Go Blazers!